Tonight, the top two home cooks in Canada will face off in the most spectacular culinary showdown this country has ever seen. You're watching the MasterChef Canada finale. The MasterChef dream is powerful. And after a nationwide search, 40 finalists came to Toronto to pursue it. Yeah! My dream's coming true. I'm actually here doing this. But only the best earned a coveted white apron. You guys gotta watch out. Woo! And a spot in the top 14. Yeah! Each week, they fought for survival in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Wow, wow, wow. Outstanding. Thank you. I put it on one of my menus. Showcasing their talents. It's magic! And facing their fears. If you don't get this right, you don't belong in this kitchen. They cooked for great Canadian heroes. Colonel Chris Hatfield. Great Canadian chefs and at a great Canadian restaurant. Service! Raw lobster. Unacceptable. One by one, 12 home cooks were eliminated. Now, only two remain. Tonight's first finalist is Mary. Right out of the gate, she proved she was one to watch. I am so excited today, and I need to win. Mary, Mary, Mary. Oh my God, oh my God. She impressed the judges with her fresh take on tradition. Perfect. It is absolutely delicious. Oh my God. You're cooking with the mind of a chef. Mary, you did it again. Thank you so much. Her Achilles heel was her perfectionism. You could say that I'm a bit of a control freak sometimes. And the anxiety it caused oh, her. Shoot. Oops, Woo. here we go, fire. Breathe, Mary, breathe. Twice, she landed in the bottom two. Mary, it's time to take off your apron and head up to the gallery. Oh my God. Good job. <laughs> But her positivity never wavered. Yes. You're doing amazing. And her sweetness. She's just the best person I've ever met. Coexists with an iron will. I'm gonna cook my friggin' heart out today. She started cooking after a tragic accident. My dad died and my mom and brother were both um, seriously injured. Mary's been cooking for me and the whole family since she was about eight years old. I've always kind of done the, the right and responsible things. Now, this young insurance broker is cooking to change her life. My dream is to own a catering company and to make food my life. And she plans to make MasterChef Canada history. I am going to be Canada's first Lady MasterChef. The only thing that stands in Mary's way is Jeremy, an ambitious 34-year-old from Manitoba. My food dream is to be at the top of the Winnipeg food scene. I learned to make sushi by myself. I taught myself. He started cooking to honor his mother. My mom, I lost her to cancer. I have her tattooed on my arm. I know that she would be proud watching me here today. He immediately impressed the judges. Your dish was a knockout. And by tapping into his Filipino roots. I want to share my culture with Canada. He created a string of impressive dishes. It's called sizzling sisig. This is Filipino soul food. His dishes had flavor, but lacked refinement. That's like using filet mignon in a stew. <clears throat> and that made him easy to overlook. I don't mind being underestimated because I'm ready to blindside everyone else in this competition. And he did with his ability to learn and grow. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yes. Jeremy. <sighs> it's delicious. Thank you, chef. Perfect family meal. This dish is the best looking I've seen in this competition. Thank you, chef. And as his skill grew, so did his confidence. I've trained in Muay Thai, I'm a fighter, and I'm also a fighter in the kitchen. Now, he's set to prove that he's nobody's underdog. I'm not scared. I'm never scared. I got this. It's on. Congratulations, Mary and Jeremy. Over the last 14 weeks, you've survived every demanding challenge that we've thrown at you. And with a succession of beautiful dishes, you've proved that you deserve to be here in the MasterChef Canada finale. Who here is on Team Mary tonight? And Team Jeremy? Matthew, you know these two better than anyone here. What do you think they're bringing to the competition tonight? Their styles are very different. Jeremy, he's the fastest person in this kitchen. And Mary, from the get-go, she started out strong and just keeps on getting better and better. So this is gonna be an epic battle tonight.
Dr. Sean, in the golden pants. Are you surprised to see these two going for gold tonight? I'm not surprised at all. I know that we are in for one hell of a show today. I cannot wait. You've both sacrificed a great deal to be here tonight. You've left your loved ones back home to pursue your dreams. Mary, here for you tonight is your mother Myra, your aunt Joni, brother Michael, and your boyfriend Aaron. Jeremy, all the way from Winnipeg, your sister Jennifer, your brother-in-law Nanette, and your nieces Gianna and Sophia. Jennifer, Jeremy learned to cook while your mother was sick as a way to keep her memory alive. How would she feel seeing what Jeremy has achieved here? She would be beyond proud, very, very proud. Having my family here is just gonna boost my morale. Who would have thought I would make it to the end and now I just gotta win. Myra, Mary is drawn on great memories of her father here. How do you think he'd feel to see what she's accomplished in this kitchen? I have no doubt that he is with us. And I know he is just as proud as I am. He's beaming. <laughs> <laughs> My dad thought I would do something great. And I finally feel like I've done that. Um, it's really nice. <laughs> Families, thank you for coming. But now, it's time to get cooking. So please, head up to the gallery. And tonight, we want to see a gorgeous three-course restaurant quality meal that demonstrates everything you've learned and leaves no doubt in anyone's mind that you deserve to be Canada's next master chef. You face off in three cooking rounds. First, the appetizers, then the entree, and finally, dessert. After each round, you will present a flawless plate to each of us in the banquet room, where we will taste and judge your dishes. You will now have 10 minutes in the pantry to get everything you need to make the most important three-course meal of your lives. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time in the pantry starts now. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Jeremy, this is nuts. Jeremy is going to win because he has a perfect combination of heart and soul and skill and technique. I'm on team Mary. Oh my gosh. Because Mary makes really good food and her creativity is out of this world. Excited. I'm rooting for Jeremy. He came in somewhat like an underdog, but through the competition he has grown. And right now he's the best home cook here. He deserves to win. Mary's skills are second to none. I've never seen a cook that can do what Mary can do. It's just second nature to her. This is gonna be one epic showdown. Mary, tell us what you'll be making. I'm gonna do a golden beet borscht and some beet cured trout. Jeremy, what will you be making for us? I'm going to be making a bison tataki, uni cream, and fresh uni for garnish. You will now have 45 minutes to transform those great ideas into beautiful appetizers. Throughout this competition, Jeremy and I have worked so well together, but now we are in the finale against each other, and I need to beat him. I feel like Mary is peaked, and I feel like I've just started to rise. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. Come on, come on, Mary. There it is, Jeremy. Let's go, buddy. These two home cooks have different strengths and different weaknesses. Jeremy is an absolute speed demon in the kitchen. Mary is a little bit slower, tends to get a little bit flustered, but she comes on really, really strong when it comes to plating and those finishing techniques. Beautiful technique, Mary. First thing I do is get my bison cut and seasoned and searing right away. I'm doing bison tataki. It's a shout out to Manitoba. The bison is on our flag. Tataki is obviously a traditional Japanese dish piece of protein that's seared on the outside. It has to literally be raw in the middle. One tip, and even the restaurant uses it, they partially freeze that protein before they slice it very thin. Uni is a very powerful flavored seafood. Uni is a sea urchin, and inside is the golden part. That's what people eat. It's like taking a bite of the sea. 
The dish sounds absolutely delicious. I need sugar. I have sugar? Here. Look at that. I'm surprised. Even at this level, at the finale, they're still helping each other. This is so Canadian. That it is. You know, I love the concept of Mary's elevated borscht. Borscht is typically a hearty red beet soup, but I'm making golden beet borscht. Mary's a master at taking classic traditional food ideas and elevating them and giving them a little bit of a twist. I'm also making beet cured trout. Typically, when you're curing fish, you need 24 hours to really get the flavors in there. I don't have that. So I need to juice the beets and really bump up the flavor in the marinade. The raw beet juice could be a bit harsh, a bit too earthy. So I hope she gets that right balance. Thank you so much, guys. Right? Hey there, Mary. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you? So you've chosen to do borscht. I have. And this is not any ordinary borscht, though. It's going to be served cold, but also raw. Exactly. Any concern in slicing that piece of trout nice and thin and evenly? I'm actually doing it in little triangle medallions. It's going to be bright, fun. It's going to look like me on a plate. <laughs> look forward to trying it. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much, Chef. Jeremy, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, I got most of my components on the go. This is going to open last minute. Fresh unis. Fresh live sea urchin. Those are beautiful. So where are you at with your bison right now? My bison is already seared, and it's chilling, so it gets a bit stiff, so I can make nice, thin slices of it. This right here, chef, is one of my favorite sauces to make. I love tataki sauce. Taste it. Wow. That's... Insane. That is, that's the most delicious thing I've ever had from you here in this kitchen. Yes, Thank you, Chef. Wow. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. Mary is just starting to take her marinated trout out of her beet mixture there. Yeah. And that is a messy job. Curing takes sometimes days. The only protein on this plate is that fish. And if it's not cured properly, the dish won't work. Now, her idea was to cure that trout in the beet juice, but I don't think there was enough time to achieve that cure. Yeah, she's squeezing some lemon juice onto it now. That'll speed up a little bit more of a cure there. That's a smart move. Five minutes, you got five minutes. Better start plating. I'm cutting into my bison, and I don't like the thickness of the cuts. The way that he's hacking through that bison right now, he's kind of tearing the meat. Jeremy's actually pounding it to make sure that he has that even thickness right around. Well, that's a good comeback. But he hasn't even opened those live sea urchin yet. They take a while to process. This is the opening to my menu. Everything needs to be perfect on it. Oh, look at that pretty color. Three minutes, you have three minutes left, come on! Look at Jeremy, I don't see those live sea urchins. How is he gonna pull this off? Here we go, here we go. He's, he's about to open up his sea urchins. Wow. One minute, one minute left, come on. Let's hustle, let's go. really good. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. The fish is nice and pink, and it tastes beady. I'm really, really happy. I love how it's plated. I'm going to win this appetizer round because of my flavors. Mary and Jeremy, please follow us into the banquet room with your dishes. Please bring your dish forward. This tasting is so different than any I've done before. First off, there's a table. The judges are sitting in front of me. This is super terrifying and legit. <laughs> I did a take on borscht. There's little pillows of a horseradish goat cheese, beet cured trout, and caraway breadcrumb. I suggest we all dig in. Mary, this trout is a little flat in flavor. The cure didn't fully sort of take place. 
But what I really love about this, that acidic hit that you get, absolutely wonderful. Works really well with the earthiness of those beats. Love the bright color. It is borscht in a very modern kind of way. This is sort of new, energetic, vibrant thinking. Overall, a great dish. Well, Mary, it's colorful. It's fresh. The taste to me was just right. The trout, the cream, and that crunchy crumb all adds complexity and balance to this dish. Thank you very much. When you eat everything together, the goat's cheese, the soup, the herbs, the trout, all the textures, all the flavors, they just sing. It's really delicious. Thank you. OK, Jeremy, please bang up your dish. I'm super proud of this dish. I just want to win. That's all that's going through my mind. A bison tataki with uni cream, fried lotus chips, and a tataki sauce. Jeremy, the meat could be a little bit more unified in the way you cut it. You know, one of the pieces here is very thin. This one's a little bit thicker. My advice to you is take that large piece of bison, cut it into quarters, they chill faster, and when you cut them, they're very easy to cut, opposed to having one large piece. But other than that, the thought process behind this dish is really that of a very accomplished chef. Complex, delightful, it's really fantastic. Thank you. Jeremy, there are so many things on this dish. Textures and taste that you discover as you start eating. The creaminess of the uni, that adds that wonderful backbone of rich flavor to that bison. These are wonderful flavors that come together beautifully on a plate like this. Thank you. Jeremy, this is by far your most creative dish. The combinations, the complexity, the texture, it's like Asia meets Manitoba. Thank you, chef. Now we need a few moments to discuss in private. Please head back to the kitchen and prepare for round two. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow, I was blown away by both their dishes. They had flaws here and there. With all things considered, it's even Steven. Which one would you line up for, though, Michael? Mary's dish or Jeremy's dish? I'd line up a Jeremy's dish. Really? You know, when you tried all of Mary's components together in one spoon, it was absolutely delicious. Jeremy's flavors were really solid. They were interesting, unique, lots of great texture. The whole dish won me over. You know, I just cannot make up my mind. If they cook like this, I can't wait to the next two dishes. The score right now in my mind is 1-0 for me. I really don't know who took this. I just need to bring my game, and I'm ready. Mary and Jeremy, you both served as show-stopping appetizers. But there are two more dishes to go. Jeremy! What will you be making for your entree? I'm going to be doing my take on a sushi boat. So, Mary, how do you plan to compete with that? I'm going old school. I'm going to do my take on surf and turf. You have just one hour and 15 minutes to cook us the best entree that either of you have ever cooked in your lives. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Show us what you got, starting now! We're seeing both Jeremy and Mary cooking with a lot of heart and soul, but the dishes are complete polar opposites. One is modern, Asian, and the other dish is very old school, very homey. I don't eat meat, so I serve on turf. It's definitely a risk, but I came here to take risks and win MasterChef Canada. Jeremy is taking four sushi-inspired dishes. He's got a lot of things to pull together there. Now, Jeremy's sushi boat has to be elevated. It can't be sushi that you get in a kiosk at a shopping mall. This has to be sushi that we've never seen before anywhere. I'm making sushi because sushi got me my apron, so I'm thinking sushi's going to get me the title. Hi there, Jeremy. Hey, chef. So tell me, what are you doing right now with the papaya? This is the traditional way to make papaya salad. So you cut into it down to close to where the seeds are at, and then you take a slicer and you do this. That's the way that it's traditionally made in uh, Southeast Asia. That's amazing. And wow. then you get all these little Whiskey uneven friends. cuts. Yeah. How are you planning to tie all of these four dishes together so they make the feeling of a one complete entree dish? They all have soy, ginger, and wasabi. They all play on those elements. Sounds like you've got a lot to get done. I'll leave you to it. Thank Thanks you, so much, Jeremy.
Mary has been so good with meat, I sometimes forget she's a vegetarian. When I'm cooking meat, I need to go by eye and smell and feel. This pressure is insane. When it comes to sushi rice in Japan, it is sacred. It is served at room temperature. I make my sushi rice, and it has to get cooled. So I put it in the blast chiller. He didn't have to put it in the blast chiller. He had plenty of time, put a cloth over it, and let it cool. Sometimes you put it in the blast chiller, the rice gets dry and hard. As I'm shucking the oysters, I am so full of adrenaline right now that holding the oyster knife is nearly impossible. Mary is struggling with those oysters big time. In the pandemonium, I realized that I didn't take my beef out of the oven. That meat has continued to cook. Mary's looking frazzled at those steaks. I don't think she's happy. I'm really nervous that I've accidentally overcooked my meat. I am panicking. I'm really nervous that I've accidentally overcooked my meat. That is a big and bad mistake. That doesn't look like medium rare to me. You don't know it until we cut into it. It's going to be the moment of truth. Ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. The rice, Jeremy. I leave my rice in the blast chiller too long. The rice froze a little. Now i got to figure out how I'm going to save this rice. His rice is frozen into His one rice. solid sheet. And now he's trying to defrost it in the oven. If the sushi rice is no good, then your dish is no good. I have so many things on the go. Have you ever seen Mary's station in such a state of disarray? Look at it. I need to put the best thing I can on that plate. Time is not at all my friend in this cook. Jeremy is going to put the new spin on four sushi-inspired dishes. Jeremy is really running around. Look at the sweat coming from his face. He's got the speed, but where he sometimes lets himself down is the finesse and running out of time in terms of plating. One minute left, last minute. Get those finishing touches on your plate now. Good job. I feel good. I didn't think I was going to get everything on the plate, but I pulled it off. I'm really worried that my meat is over. I really don't want it above medium. Jeremy, please bring up your dish. I made four different dishes. There is a deconstructed soft shell crab spider roll, and then a miso marinated baby octopus with mushrooms, a tuna crunch roll with wasabi mayo and crispy salmon skin, and then a ginger papaya salad. Well, you know, Jeremy, I was a little bit worried about the rice because you had it in the blast chiller and you had it in the oven. But you know something? The rice, to me, was perfect. I eat in sushi in some of the best restaurants in Asia. This is restaurant quality. Just absolutely creative and delicious. Thank you, Chef. Jeremy, this is a feast for one's eyes. And I know that you have been challenged at times with plating. You'd never know that looking at these four dishes. The tuna roll, very clean, very well executed. The soft shell crab, cooked beautiful and crisp. The dish that, for me, fell a little flat was the papaya salad. I'm looking for a little sweetness in it to make it sing for me. Otherwise, a really great job. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you, Chef. So, Jeremy, here you have four very different things happening on one plate, opposed to having one composed main course that's very focused. You give yourself now four different ways to be criticized. You know that. Mm -hmm. The standout dish for me was the octopus with the mushrooms. You could have just served one dish, and it could have been that dish right there. That's my advice to you is focus. You need to focus more. But overall, very ambitious and very delicious. Thank you, Chef. Mary, please bring yours up. 
So this is my take on surf and turf. It's a seared beef tenderloin with fried oysters and an arugula and sea asparagus pesto. It's a beautifully composed plate on every level, but I know right now you're absolutely agonizing, wondering what is happening inside this piece of meat here. I am just cringing, waiting to see the center. Perfect medium. All right, let's dig in. Mary, the ingredients that you chose to put on this dish, I think were well thought out, they work together, and it's a fun play on surf and turf. The oyster, briny, salty, added that wonderful savory pop. A lovely, thoughtful, excellently executed dish. Thank you. Mary, each individual component was perfect. The leek onion ring, I mean, that is genius. The uh, pesto, sea asparagus, something very unique and something I would be proud to serve in my restaurant. Thanks very much. You know, Mary, I think you found your niche. Taking the old school and bringing it to the new school. It's such a beautifully composed plate in terms of the combination of flavors, presentation, the sea asparagus with the arugula and a pesto. That's the first time I've ever had those two together and they work brilliantly. It's pretty outstanding. It really is. Thank you. We need a moment to discuss. Thank you. Thank you, chefs. Mary's dish was very close to perfect. Jeremy, his four individual plates, I was just blown away by the caliber of his presentation, the variety and complexity of the dishes. I think two of those dishes that he produced were knockouts absolute knockouts. However, Jeremy, I think, set himself up in some ways for more criticism because he chose to do four different dishes. Mary chose one dish, which I think she nailed on every level. I hope we're gonna get more clarity in the dessert round. I hope so too. We have to. I feel like I took this round. Everything went well together. In my mind, the winner of the entree round is me. It's all down dessert, and uh, I'm good with desserts. So far, you've both delivered knockout appetizers and entrees. Now it's time for your desserts. Jeremy, what are you planning for your dessert? Milk tea panna cotta with coconut tapioca and jackfruit ice cream. My inspiration for this is my mom. She cooked with all of these flavors. Jackfruit was her favorite. What about you, Mary? What's the dish that you're going to make? A blueberry financier uh, with a buttermilk corn ice cream. This dessert just makes me think of driving up to the cottage with my family and stopping to get corn on the side of the road and, and going to our favorite blueberry lady. You now have 60 minutes to make us a world-class dessert. I got my white apron with dessert. I know it's going to win it for me. Baking comes second nature to Mary, so it's gonna take very bold flavors to beat her. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Right now I'm working on my financier, getting the dry ingredients all ready. It's like a pound cake. It's a little bit lighter. There's egg whites that are folded into it. She's pairing that with blueberries and a corn ice cream. I think this sounds actually very intelligent. Corn and blueberries just kind of make sense to me. They both grow at similar times, so Mother Nature wants them to be eaten together. Jeremy, on the other hand, he's doing something that I think sounds really quite adventurous. I'm making a milk tea panna cotta and a jackfruit ice cream. Panna cotta, it, it essentially means cooked cream. So you have to warm up your cream base, flavor it, add gelatine to the warm panna cotta mixture. You then need to strain it, and then it has to set and chill. Jeremy. Hi, Chef. Do you feel like the underdog in the dessert competition? I've always felt like the underdog, especially when it came to baking, but more so now that I'm going up against Mary. This is beautiful. Look at that. Fresh jackfruit. You are really cooking with the Philippines in mind and your mother in mind. Yes. Incredible. All these flavors, every single component on the, this dish reminds me of her. Good luck. Thank you. 
Barry, Hello. how are you doing? Are you feeling confident? I am feeling confident. I'm confident with my flavors. It's going to be tasty and different. How do you feel about what Jeremy's doing? His dessert sounds incredible. It does sound incredible, and it's a lot of flavors I've never worked with before. He has a beautiful, beautiful palate. I'm going to have to run to the blast chiller, I'm sorry. Um, don't drop it. I'm worried about this. She's got to get here fast. That's going to burn. Are you concerned about this at all? No, no? this is actually okay. doing exactly what I wanted to okay, do. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second. <laughs> this is uh, just cream with a bit of sugar and salt, and I'm cooking the heck out of it. It's a brown butter crumb to go under my ice cream. It's really tasty. Hmm. Trust me. How close do you think this competition is right now? Super close. Super close. I'm super close. And I am feeling it. I'm going to let you focus on your dessert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Start plating. The whole competition is riding on this dessert. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. I'm running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this and they don't. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on. Come on, guys. Four minutes. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Amazing, guys. I am so happy with my final dish. This dessert is beautiful, and it's exactly how I wanted it to look. I've never plated a dessert this beautiful before. This dessert shows how far I've come. Jeremy, please bring up your dishes. Milk tea panna cotta. On top is a coconut tapioca topped with fried plantains with a jackfruit ice cream. Well, Jeremy, I think you've created something that is completely and utterly original. So let's dig in. You know, Jeremy, all that different textures coming together, you know, to me, that is genius. This is not at all too sweet, too sour. It's very difficult to bake panna cotta with milk tea because it has to be very, very strong. And of course, being at the bottom of the dessert, so you're gonna hit that last. Now, that, I guess you could have made that slightly stronger, heavier on the teeth, but I just wanna take spoonful and spoonful. I love it. Thank you, chef. When I watched you prepare it, and I heard you describe it, I didn't understand it. I don't like this at all. I love it. Thank you. It speaks to me in so many different levels. Texturally, it's incredibly advanced. The flavors just keep changing and morphing. The top layer has that beautiful tapioca, which I love. And then when you think you figured it out, you dig a little deeper and you find this beautiful tea and milk panna cotta. I've never had anything like it. You took all the flavors that your mom introduced to you and you've just created a new dessert. Incredible. Thank you, chef. It is so light and so unique and interesting. The tapioca pearls have a wonderful mouthfeel. You sort of want them to dance around on your palate as you taste that little bit of coconut. You then have that refreshing citrus layer that is so bright and clean, yet still light. This is a great dessert. Thank you, chef. Mary, please bring your dessert up. I made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. You know, Mary, the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> All the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. 
Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The Panencia cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with the popcorn. It feels like a road trip. Going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. You both prepared absolutely stunning three-course meals, and you've made choosing a winner a near on impossible task. But tonight, one of you will become Canada's next master chef. And we need to decide who that's going to be. So please head back to the kitchen. Thank you guys. Thank you chefs, thank you. We find ourselves in a very difficult situation because this is the closest competition we have ever seen. This was about the entire process, but they were both very good, very creative, very innovative, so I'm torn right now. I think without doubt, it is the toughest. Jeremy started off with the bison tataki, and then that modern sushi bowl, and then finally, that beautiful comfort dessert with all those southeastern tropical flavors, with memories of his mother. My menu may be a little ambitious, but you gotta reach for the stars. The title is gonna be mine. I think I deserve it, and I think I've proved it. Mary took us on a Canadian road trip. She started off with an elevated take on borscht, which was delicious, and then she moved into a beautiful take on surf and turf, served with crispy oysters, crispy leeks, that potato and onion puree, and then she moved into that beautiful blueberry and corn dessert. I'm going to win this because I know my flavors and I, I finally have a clear culinary voice. It's a teeter totter a couple of missteps in each course. If you had to eat one of those three course meals, Again, which one would it be? Mary or Jeremy? If I could pick both, I would. Mary and Jeremy, you both made the decision to follow your culinary dreams. And those dreams led you here to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Week after week, you braved some of the most punishing challenges that we've ever seen in this competition. But the two of you survived. In fact, you flourished, growing by leaps and bounds with each challenge and presenting us with the finest dishes we've seen in the history of MasterChef Canada. You have now reached a level of skill and artistry that has earned you a place on this stage. Please come up and change places with us. Winning today would be just the beginning. The MasterChef Canada title would change my whole life. I want this so badly. Winning this would be so amazing. Tonight, you both took us on a flavor journey that honored your cultural backgrounds and your families. Every course demonstrated that both of you cook with skill and heart. The three of us struggled to reach a consensus. Unfortunately, only one of you could win $100,000, this trophy, and the life-changing MasterChef Canada title. We agreed that one home cook created a menu that was slightly more cohesive and satisfying. This year's winner and Canada's new MasterChef is... Mary. Congratulations. Thank you, you did so it. much. That's a wonderful <laughs> job. Every good emotion that anyone in the world has ever felt is me right now. <laughs> this trophy represents everything I've learned and everything that is about to happen. I'm the first. Lady, Master Chef Canada. Yes, it's me. Mary really deserves it. I'm happy for her. I made it this far, and I'm still really proud of what I did. 
being second ain't so bad. Oh my God! I know my dad is watching me, and I know that he's here with me. And I know he's proud.